Well, hello, and welcome to another Space Foundation Space Commerce Entrepreneurial Interview. I'm Shelley Brunswick, the Chief Operating Officer. Today, I have the privilege to talk with Pinar Onchu, CEO of Atlas Office. Well, hello, Pinar. Hello, Shelley. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. You're welcome. And I thank you for being here. Well, we're excited to share your insight with our audience. Let me tell our audience a little bit about you. You have an amazing background. Thank you. You're welcome. Pinar is an XR developer, entrepreneur, and urban designer. She is a co-founder and the CEO of Atlas Office, 3D immersive business social platform. She comes from a technical background of software development, simulation, and game development, specialties with fundamental troubleshooting. Her special interest is neuroscience, human behavior, and cosmology. She is determined to be one of the most successful women entrepreneurs globally. So I'm honored that, again, you're joining us today because I think our panel, our our audience is going to love hearing you talk about your, first of all, let's start with talk about your company. Tell us about Atlas Office. Yeah, sure. So, uh Hello, everybody. Uh, Atlas of I'm the CEO of Atlas Office, and so what we do is basically gathering people together in a digital space. So with the pandemic, we have realized that we cannot go out. At some cases, that forced us to work remotely. Some companies before COVID were already working remotely, but wasn't so popular. Let's accept. Uh, So we have realized we can work remotely too. And this has got huge benefits too. We don't have any traffic rush, yet we can work at a job which is miles away on the other side of the planet. So this actually extended our boundaries, yet we are still missing our offices, right? So, well, what uh, when we are talking with our customers, they're mostly struggling with being all alone in their you know flat screen, looking at the same screen all day long without communicating with any people, no matter what they do on the video calls. It's not like interacting with people. Uh, This is how Atlas Office was born. I actually come from uh, an XR developing company. So far, uh, for the last five years, we've been developing uh, AR, VR, and similar new media uh, technologies cutting edge future technologies, people call. So uh, for the last five years, we developed more than 35 projects, actually, projects and products. Uh, So Atlas Office uh, is one of them. We started developing it way before COVID. We projected remote working would go more trendy, but we never expected this, uh, you know, acceleration, actually. So uh, we are actually uh, some group of mad architects and designers uh, trying to break free their uh, physical limits from the physical world. Now we are creating digital worlds. So uh, here we are with Atlas Office. I'll tell more about uh, Atlas Office in the upcoming times of the conversation. That's amazing, Pinar. You know what our audience really wants to know is, what was your journey? How did you get to where you are today? Tell us about your background. Yeah, sure. Uh, I actually see myself like a limitless, lifelong curious. I have got an endless curiosity. Uh, From my childhood on, I've been moving here and there because of my family's uh, jobs. Uh, I lived in Uh, eight different cities, three countries, changed like 12 schools. I mean, 12 schools. Yeah, you know. So I have experienced lots of different geographies, cultures, people, living and perceptions. Uh, So uh, I still, you know, have that curiosity about anything I come across with. Maybe this is the source. So uh, then I started studying urban design because it was super, super uh, exciting for me to consider, uh, you know, pr- appropriate, a fantastic living space for humanity. Uh, then with a uh, combination of my technological interest, I started developing 
geospatial simulations for geographic information systems. Uh, then started developing my own uh, mobile applications and desktop applications, completely switched to being a technology developer. And where that's where my entrepreneurial journey started. Uh, you know, when you're in the tech world, it's pretty popular to jump in the uh, entrepreneurial world. Uh, so I started a technological company. Now I'm on the second one. Uh, and uh, in between that, I have developed an interest in neuroscience because this curiosity started make, ma started making me feel curious about why I am so curious. So I tried to understand how people perceive the world, how they make decisions, and how they uh, interpret what's happening, how they imagine, uh, how they feel curiosity about what they see to understand them and to uh, understand myself so that I can continue my works in much better way and uh, set better dialogues with people, understand people better and their needs. Uh, at that point, uh, I started developing the interest in neuroscience. This, all of the combinations of this urban design, technological developments and neuroscience coming from that human be behavior understanding process just actually made the perfect combination for combination for developing extended realities. Uh, currently, what we basically do is designing digital spaces for people to have certain experiences. That's fantastic. So I, I love how you kind of came to where, where you came up with this concept uh, and the journey of getting to you where you are with Atlas Office. Tell us a little bit more about the spark for Atlas Office, and then would you actually share some of it with our audience so they can see what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. So uh, let me share my screen and show you a few snapshots about what we do. So welcome to Mars. This is actually pretty much one of our first uh, virtual reality applications. Uh, because in virtual reality, we can make people be there. Don't go there. Don't have take the journey, but immediately be there, teleport there. Uh, because we process the world in a complete way, when we're looking at the screens, uh, it's just an image. It can be a movie. It can be some so, some sort of fiction. But when we are in the virtual reality headset, wherever we look, we see the same thing so that our brains think, okay, I am here. So we can make people wake up in Mars and feel that nervous moment when they need to figure out how to find food, how to find water, how to breathe, how they can refill the batteries of the living space they are in. So they are on the red planet, walking around, trying to survive. So uh, this experience has taken a lot of uh, attention by everybody that's been tested. So we took the uh, experience level one step further. So here you see, uh, this is an air temple. This is something in our regular lives, normal lives, where uh, we cannot go. Uh, but we're taking you there. You have got a glider. You're on, an, on a flying rock, actually. So you're taking your glider and, you know, roaming around, uh, roaming between those rocks. There are waterfalls, there are clouds, there are birds, there are dragonflies. So, and then you're arriving to some spot where somebody is helping you uh, exercise your breath and meditate. So you don't have to meditate, your eyes closed. We can take you to another place which is completely calming and soothing. So uh, this is one of our uh, applications where we take people to another reality. Then uh, this is actually right now what I'm focused in and what I am CEO of. This is Atlas Office. Welcome to a space where you see your workmates on the space. When we're yeah, when we're working remotely, uh, we are looking at the videos of our colleagues. 
uh, when somebody needs to join us, they need to find the true link to connect. Or we have no idea who other people are doing. They are in the space or not. They are in the universe or not. So it's all me and the video faces uh, alone. But in Atlas Office, when you are in the space, you see everybody doing something. There are people in the meeting rooms. There are people working together in the uh, table in the table areas. There are people in the social areas just having a social chat. We have got spaces like that too. And there are some people who has got their away sign on their head, meaning don't disturb me, I'm here, but it, if it's only for urgent. So uh, basically, people just jump in the space and collaborate in like 10 seconds. They don't need to send links. They just open their video cameras inside. They still hear their voices. They can make their presentations, share their screens. They can even share their 3D models and work on it in a collaboration. And there are social spaces and games in the area. People just don't need to actually only gather for working in an office space. Uh, remember, in our offices, we used to celebrate birthday parties. We used to make Happy Fridays. We used to get together for just watching some casual thing. For example, sometimes maybe a movie even, you know. And we had to, we just had some social chat moments that bounded us actually with the team. We are bounding people, no matter what we produce in our lives, that can be academical articles, a technological product, software or hardware. Uh, we can do, we can do anything, but eventually in the end, we are human beings. And the things that we produce are also for human beings. So. Both sides start and end with a human being. That's where we need to connect, to uh, connect with the space, connect with the team, so that connect with the job and the idea to take it further. So in Atlas Office, we help people get together immediately in their 3D personalized bodies uh, so that they can comfortably work wherever they are yeah without feeling lonely we're actually getting over the loneliness problem getting over with i have no friends anymore problem getting over with you know uh where is everybody i cannot find them problem and we also get over with uh i have worked for 14 hours but nobody is realizing this problem because when we're working remotely actually the time flies by we say, okay, I don't have any time to spend on traffic, but yet today, for example, is my 12th hour awake in front of the computer. Uh, so this is how we also track your, okay, you need to take some rest moments too. I think that's great. And I think what I want you to help share with our audience is how this can really help us with space. I mean, you showed the Mars simulation and meditation, but I know there's a connection with both planning for space travel as well as what will how this could be useful on Mars. So could you share that space connection with our audience? Yes, exactly. So, uh, okay, uh, this example is what I actually love. If we have never ever needed to write anything down, would we ever need to invent pens? Uh, we, we wouldn't even need it and wonder it and find it and use it. So space is like that. Space journey is not something somebody is doing. Uh, we are doing it. The humanity, the people, everybody, it doesn't matter which background you're coming from. It doesn't matter what information you have. It doesn't matter how experienced or young and you know excited you are. All of us has got certain know-hows uh, and certain uh, valuable, actually, uh, informations. What we do is making people feel themselves in space. We're taking them and making them experience, so that they would uh, start wondering about how to travel there, how to take food there, how to plant food there, uh, how to survive there. Everybody will take certain questions on themselves, I'm sure. 
depending on their backgrounds and interests. So uh, what we do is basically making them feel they can do it. They can be a part of the humanity's space journey. I think that's great. And we know traveling to space, people will feel, like you said, the loneliness and being to connect virtually could be really helpful. So I want to pivot and ask you about, you, you have a very large, you have an international company. So I think understanding, how did you grow to be international? Did you have some partners along the way that helped you? How did you expand globally? Yeah, for sure. Uh, on my journey, actually, my biggest supporter is my co-founder, uh, Burcin Gurbus. So uh, all the way from the beginning, since I joined the team and started uh, these uh, products, uh, he's been uh, supporting me for climbing up the mountains together. He has got a huge background of uh, business. Uh, c- he completed uh, giant architectural projects uh, from Europe to Asia. Uh, so uh, with his business experience and knowledge and with my excitement, uh, all this way from the beginning, uh, we have climbed up the mountains together. So I appreciate his support. And how we became uh, international is <laughs> it's actually, it, it just happened to be something natural. Uh, with my actually experience of being a migrating bird, living from this country to there, flying here and there. It's like when, once we, for example, we can go to office one day in the morning time and in the evening we can find ourselves in a, in an airplane to Hong Kong, which just happened actually, uh, without planning it. You know, we just didn't even have an idea about if we could go to Hong Kong one day in the timeline or not, but... So uh, what we do is a cutting edge future technology. So our customers, the demand is global because we have got a small community that achieve this level of extended realities. In this manner, uh, we have got uh, global nominations and awards for our applications too. And we have got uh, R&D projects that we have first released in the whole world for example, with 5G uh, broadcasting technologies in 360. So when the demand is global, we decided to expand our limits. At that point, uh, we have uh, expanded to, at first, uh, Northern America, to Seattle, and to Montreal. Our headquarters uh, is in uh, Canada, Montreal. Uh, And we had global partners, for example, from uh, London, Denmark, Austria, uh, Graz, and uh, Dubai, Hong Kong, Singapore. Uh, and we are all in communication every day with our global partners, sometimes visiting them and expanding this re- extended realities technology to the world. That's fantastic. Well, that brings me to a really great question. With a global company, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you and your partner have faced growing your company? Well, at that point, the biggest challenge has been for me to be uh, young and woman. So there is a perception in the business world like uh, the people to say, okay, is older aged, experienced male people. So uh, as a woman, I sometimes feel like people are just having the conversation, avoiding me, just nodding their head to me and making me feel like I'm in the space in between them, near them. But uh, in the end, what they do is agreeing in between them as the male community. So the game is changing now, guys. So uh, I should tell you, uh, we are in the business world. And as a woman entrepreneur, I can say, I can tell you that our execution skills are splendid. Uh, so be ready to f- for us to take your spaces. 
I think that's helpful to highlight that the space economy has changed, you know, from 40 years ago where it was government focused and and we'll say primarily male and maybe U.S. and Russia to where it's totally pivoted now to commercial. We need all skill sets from high school graduate to Ph.D., young, old, male, female and different regions of the world. So diversity is now part of the future of the space ecosystem. So I think you you summarized a great example of that. You've also highlighted that you've won several awards. So I'm I'm not saying that's going to be what your answer is to this next question, but what are some of your biggest successes, not just with your company, but even personally? Well, for my part, the personal success is uh, I come from a family from both mother's and uh, father's sides, uh, which had no merchants, no business people, no entrepreneurs. For ages, our families believed in that there are people doing business and we can work with them. We can work for them. And I was like, I can do something. (laughs) So uh, at first, it was a shocking thing. Uh, I, I was saying I can do something. And I was young and I was woman. Perfect for you, you know, <laughs> to scare your greater families. So in the beginning, everybody was like, how is this going to happen? Oh, she's crazy. Uh, she will learn someday that she will need uh, another job and blah, blah. But uh, after, like, let's say, five years time uh, since I started entrepreneurship, you should see the change in the faces of people. Now they feel like they can also do something because they have got an example, which is me. It's really hard to achieve something when there are people who are not believing in you around you. So uh, you have to believe in your job and you have to believe that you can be something else than they tell. So it's like a battle in your head all the time against the universe because they are your universe after some point. So, uh, well, yeah, for my part, I love being a woman, young entrepreneur, and I love being an example uh, to uh, other young women who wants to be entrepreneurs and who believes in themselves after seeing, achieving uh, examples around them. I think that's amazing. Again, I'm just going to call you a trailblazer or a space champion. Um, Thank you. (laughs) you And what you've done is created a role model and an example for others uh, around the world. Again, male, female, Turkey, Canada, Asia. You've, you know, being a global woman entrepreneur, you've set a role model globally. So thank you for inspiring future entrepreneurs. What are some of your lessons learned you'd like to share with our audience? Now, our audience is both um, entrepreneurs as well as individuals who are looking for great mentorship advice. So I share with you uh, great mentorship advice or great entrepreneurial lessons learned. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, yeah, exactly. So uh, it's been like five years for my entrepreneurship uh, journey from scratch. Actually, not from scratch, even from, you know, earlier stage than scratch because of the background. So here is what I learned, experiencing, also considering the global journey. Uh, There is only one single thing that matters in the entrepreneurial world. It's about how your product earns. Uh, So we all, start believing in something and believing in achieving it. And we say, okay, the more I believe, the more likely it will happen to be successful. It's not going on like that, guys. So you have to go out to your market and forget that you believe in that and try to test if people believe in that. Because after all, if the only one that believes is you, you can make sure that it, your product is not going to be successful because it will only have uh, the only uh, person to like it, use it, and uh, believe in it. So wherever geography you are in, uh, just make sure you know what your product is and 
if it will make success or not. Uh, so you can test it with other customer potentials. So uh, for the global part, by the way, okay, that manner, that uh, focus idea is the same wherever you go. But what differs globally is from west to east, from north to south, wherever you are, every geographical location has got their own cultures, uh, priorities, uh, the way they live, the way they enjoy life, the way they feel sad for. So you have to accept that people can be different than you. People can value other things than you do. They can have other perceptions because they're coming from all the way different backgrounds and stories and even the food, you know. So, uh, so what you have to respect is what people feel like. If you want to set better communications with people before trying to make them accept you, you accept them and you understand them. If you understand them, they will be open to understanding you too. I think that's wonderful. I mean, obviously, uh, understanding different cultures and different norms of behavior, but you highlighted an important part for entrepreneurship, which is that marketing feasibility study. And then the second part of, you know, do is there a market for what I want to sell is can I raise money financially to create the business? And I know you're an investor as well. So tell me about the financials. How did you go through your five-year process raise money? Um, what's some good advice for our entrepreneurs out there on how you looked at the feasibility of your company financially? And then how uh -huh. did you raise the money? Yeah, sure. So uh, we are coming from a background uh, where we actually financed ourselves for the beginning years. Our company, my team has been working together for the last 15 years. So we were doing architecture back then. Uh, we were an architectural company, so we had another income. Uh, the profits that we gained from architecture was going for R&D for tech after some point. So we can say that we've been bootstrapping ourselves for some time. But after some point where we decided not going further for our architectural projects and only go with the technology, uh, then uh, we started uh, looking for investment for our certain products. Uh, currently, we have got investors to our company, but the thing is, uh, we are on uh, future technology. Uh, we are called cutting edge. So the thing that I've just explained recently uh your success is about how other people believe in you, not you believing in the job. So uh, it's pretty hard for us to persuade our customers and our investors and our sales partners. Once they believe in, sky's the limit, literally. So, uh, but until then, it's really a tough journey. You will have people who are not believing in you you will have arrogant people in front of you, laughing at you, laughing what you do. They will try to make go mad. They will try to make nervous. They will try to push you down, no matter if they're customers or investors. But uh, you will learn standing strong on foot and uh, explaining. So for some, you'll learn explaining better so that you can capture them. For some, you will learn doing nothing and leaving the topic there because it's the best way to reserve your energy for the further journeys. And after some point, you will learn that there are certain keys to persuade people. Everybody has got their own uh, keys. When you find it, you can open every door. So uh, the financial part is also a journey where you need to find the keys for every people. So uh, yeah, you need to know what they care for, what their values are for, uh, they eventually will need, of course, money in the end. You, they will need to earn in the end, but they will have the ways to believe uh, how they should gain this uh, profit. So, yeah, for example, on the space part, there is a bigger mission than just gaining the profits. 
there's a mission about humanity. There's a mission about expanding our limits. There's a mission about, uh, you know, clearing the curiosities. So uh, at certain uh, fields, at certain industries, we are more lucky because we have got more believers in future. Wonderful. The other thing I always ask about is advocacy and awareness. How important do you think having advocacy and awareness is to your your business success or even being an entrepreneur? Well, uh, you know, we are human beings. We all have got an instinct, not a habit, not a joy, but an instinct of belonging in to a community where we are accepted and supported. This is how we learned living as human beings when we were in the caveman times. So we could survive with our, you know, soft uh, bodies. We don't have big, uh, you know, tooth. We don't have giant paws. We're not scary. We had to get together. So today we still have got those instincts from psychology to neuroscience backgrounds. So uh, for the advocacy and awareness part, the more we create communities and tell people that we believe in them, the more likely they will succeed, the more powerful they will feel. Because it's a tough challenge when nobody around you is believing in you. Yes, you can be still successful. It's not mandatory to have communities around you. You can be only person on this 8 billion earth uh, to believe this will be done. This will be achieved. But if you have people around you, uh, this will be faster. This will be stronger. So be that people to support the people around you. No matter what you are doing currently, if you're doing space industry job or just another field, it doesn't matter really. Just support the people around you. Don't tell them how they cannot do it. You may think they will fail. You may think they will fail hard, but just show them the way they can succeed. Just encourage them about uh, what you think that can be encouraged. Just go ahead, be that person, be the believer. I like that. Be the believer. Plus, we've also learned that sometimes we get so f- afraid of failure, we don't try or we we try to figure it out and it takes forever to figure out and eliminate all risks. Sometimes it's better to try, fail, learn from it and move on. And so I think that's great advice. Well, Pinar, this has been wonderful. As we wrap up today, is there anything you want to share with our audience that we didn't cover? Uh, well, uh, be the believer. Believe in what you want to do. Research for it. Uh, if it fails, don't worry. Don't cry. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be another score in your scoreboard if you're caring for this because experience is more important than anything in this world. So uh, we are, as human beings, learning from our failures. Imagine how you learned walking. Uh, you cannot remember, but you can remember uh, you can observe little people those babies they keep falling down falling down and falling down and again falling down until they develop the muscles that know how not to fall down Uh, life is a journey at every aspect like that so in business life in your personal life in your entrepreneurial life or in your just uh team life Whatever you call, you will fall down, you will fall down, again fall down. The important thing is just taking lesson and finding the way not to fall down. Then you will uh, be your hero, the hero of your journey. I think that's amazing. And again, it highlights that whether it's in life or it's being an entrepreneur, it's about persistence. And Pinar, exactly. I think that's a, I think that's a fabulous way to wrap up our interview today with our audience. So thank you so much. We hope you'll join us uh, later this fall and tell us an update on where you are with your uh, your company. I would be happy to. Thank you very much for this uh, conversation, Shelley. 
You're very welcome. Well, to our audience, if you're interested in learning more about our Space Commerce program or watching other entrepreneurial webinars, go to spacefoundation.org and check out our Space Commerce series. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you again. There's a place for everyone in the new global space ecosystem. Thank you.